Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to check your ignition system to see if it's sparking in a modern automobile. This is an essential diagnostic test to see why your vehicle is not starting in a crank no start situation. Typically, in this situation, there's one of two avenues to go down, and it's fuel or spark, typically. So, we're going to tackle the most common element that usually goes wrong here and that is the spark. So I'm going to show you exactly how to test that on a modern automobile. You might, you might be familiar with how to test for spark on an older automobile with a distributor, but on more modern stuff that has fuel injection and ignition coils, this is what you have to do to check for that. It's not very difficult. It costs basically nothing, and it's very simple to do. Anybody could do this test. Just follow along, and you'll be fine. So let's jump in. So here we are on the passenger side of a 2005 Ford F-150 with the 5.4 liter V8. But this process is exactly the same for every engine with ignition coils, which is pretty much every engine made since the 90s. So this most likely applies to you. And what we need to focus on is one ignition coil. It doesn't matter which one. It's a lot easier if you had like uh, an inline four where they're pretty up front. You just need to find an ignition coil. I've found this one for cylinder number two on mine. It kind of looks like it's going to be the easiest to film for us. And I've already removed a uh, ventilation tube and I have zip tied a heater core hose over to the uh, bolts that hold the intake on. You don't need to do those steps, but I'm doing them for filming purposes so you can see what I'm doing. So we can take a look at our ignition coil and it's home just there. And what we want to do is unplug it. So it's a little difficult to see, but here's our connector. And on the other side, you can't see there's going to be a safety that we need to press and then we can wiggle the connector off. just like that, and I'll flip that over so you can see what I depressed. You can see that at just at the end of my thumb. So I've depressed it like this, and then just wiggled it off. Very easy, and we can stash that away, because we don't want to remove our ignition coil with it connected, because you can pull it up and misjudge how much force you needed, and then unfortunately you can end up just ripping this connector right off, and then you're into replacing one of these bad boys, and that doesn't sound like fun. So just disconnect it for now, and then we can unbolt it which the bolt for is right there for me. And I believe that is a seven millimeter, but it can be different for you. I'm even gonna unplug this fuel injector. You do not need to do this part though. This is just so you can see what I'm doing. And we can grab our seven millimeter socket. Again, might be different for you. Remove that bolt. Now on these ignition coils, they have ignition coil boots that go down into the spark plug well and they're made of rubber and they're really easy to tear. So when you're removing them, just pull straight up and out. Maybe just give a slight wiggle like that and then pull straight up and out because you don't want to rip this rubber boot. It's really easy to do that. So there we go. Pretty good. Pretty good. And then what we want to do next is re-plug in our ignition coil. So it makes a little click. Might not have been able to hear it, that's okay. As long as it's you can tug on it and it's not gonna like fall off, which this isn't, you're all good to go. So what we're gonna use to test this, or test for spark, is we're gonna take a small wire, about two feet long, doesn't have to be anything specific, stripped on both sides. You know, it's nothing special. I just had this wire laying around. And then, from my kitchen, I have like potato chip bag clips. You can get these at Walmart, online. I'll leave a link down below in the description. And what we're going to do basically is we're going to create a gap. And how we're gonna do that is have this wire be attached to our ignition coil and then the other side to the negative point on our battery. And then we're gonna try to turn over the engine. And if the ignition system is producing spark, we're physically going to be able to see that. So let's get that hooked up. So on this ground, it can be any reliable ground. It can be on the engine, it can be on the body, as long as it is a reliable source of ground. No more reliable than the negative battery terminal. And what we can do is take our wire and our chip clip and just attach it like this. Just make sure you're getting a good connection like this is. And uh, the wire can be as long as you need as well. There's no like, you know, limit. If your battery's in the trunk or something, you could have a very long wire going there. It's Fine. And so on our ignition coil boot, you can see that the metal part that actually produces the spark is protruding a little bit, and that's fortunate for this demonstration because then we can just put the wire on the side. But if this part is down inside the boot a little bit, you're going to have to angle the wire down in there and just kind of look inside. So what we can do is grab our wire and our chip clip, 
and attach it to our ignition coil like this and basically what you want is a gap between the wire and the metal part to be about half an inch so this is the really important part you want to have at least a half inch gap between this metal part and the wire and again if this is down inside of the boot you're gonna to have to you know angle it around down inside and then take a look for yourself I'm actually gonna open this up just a smidge so that way we can really see so that half inch gap looks absolutely perfect and now we're ready to test. All right, so I've turned off my studio lights so you can very clearly see the spark if it happens. Now, if it does gap and you'll see a nice big spark from here to here and you know it has spark, so you know that spark isn't the problem. Okay, so before we test this, it's important to keep your fingers away from anything. Uh, you really don't want to get shocked by that. It's not the end of the world. You won't, you know, be seriously injured or worse. Uh, you know, it's like 25,000 volts, but the amperage is ridiculously low. So it'll sting, but it won't, you know, cause any serious damage. Um, but the, the idea is to stay away from it, keep your fingers or anything away from it. Um, that's why we set everything up with the clips, that way you don't have to hold anything. So let's go ahead and try it. So you just saw four very big sparks jump across that gap there, so we know the ignition system is producing spark. So if it isn't producing spark, you didn't see it sparking, nine times out of ten, our go-to fix on this is going to be your crank angle sensor. So. Go ahead and change that and then try this test again. And I have a link down below in the description to show you how to change a crank angle sensor on two different vehicles. One's a Yukon and the other one is a Ford Focus. So you can choose which one you want to watch. Okay, so now we can just undo what we did, removing our kitchen clip from the boot and then from the battery as well. Get that out of there. We don't need that anymore. So now we can just do the reverse of what we did. Unplug our ignition coil. Press that safety there, pull that off. And then we can very gingerly drop our boot back on there. Make sure it finds its home, like this one has, very cool. And then we can replace our bolt that holds that down. And we're just gonna snug that bad boy up, but torque specs are gonna vary from make and model, so you know, just wrist tight is fine. It's a very small bolt. It doesn't need to be bulk tight or anything crazy. It'll be fine. And then we can plug our electrical connector back in. Usually it makes a nice little click, but just make sure it can't come off. And it can't, so we're good. And then I'm gonna hook my fuel injector back up, but you did not need to unplug that. See, normally it clicks like that. It's too back on. Again, you didn't need to do that. I just did that for filming purposes because you can see that this tube goes right over our ignition coil. So that wouldn't have been fun to look at. Very cool, back together. So that is how you check for spark on an automobile that is cranking and not starting. The first thing we always go to is straight to the ignition coil to see if we're getting spark. And if we're getting spark, we can move on. And I will go over that in another video. We're gonna have a whole series on what to do when you have a crank no start, but this is the best place to start is check if you have spark. So if you don't have spark, just like I said it previously in the video, go ahead and just change your crank angle sensor. Uh, sometimes it's called a crankshaft positioning sensor and I have uh, links down below in the description to um, two cases of that. They're typically not terribly hard to do. Uh, sometimes it won't even throw a code, sometimes it will. So you can't always rely on that. Just in our experience over you know, 30, 40 years between uh, my dad and myself, we have noticed that changing your crankshaft positioning sensor, nine times out of 10 is gonna fix the problem if you do not have spark. In our case, we did have spark, so that was cool. You could see what that looked like. Thank you so much for watching. All applicable links are located down below in the description. If you have any questions, try to leave them down below in the comments and I'll try to get to them. If this video uh, has helped you at all, please leave it a like and I'll see you next time.